Hello everyone, Juxtaposition here. This will be a short video entitled Mayhem Minutia. I want to go over some points which uh, tend to get glossed over in some of the, the larger stories. So um, I'm a little distracted because uh, the morning started out nicely where we had kind of hazy, silver, smoggy skies which is known as blue skies because California doesn't have any crystal clear blue skies like we used to have when it was sunny California. We have now chemtrail uh, residual skies. So I just knew, I just knew that even though it's Easter, Easter Sunday, an important holy day for Christians, that these satanic military pilots with their satanic devilish bankers would be back and sure enough by 10.30 a.m. they were back with dozens of chemtrails and satanic patterns throughout the skies and I would anticipate by the time this video is over we will have overcast skies on a otherwise crystal clear sunny day. But we don't have crystal clear sunny days anymore. We have 120 consecutive days of toxic waste chemtrails being dumped upon the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm just counting the North Bay but it's going on everywhere. And you have to be dumber than a box of hammers to not understand that you're being sprayed like bugs. But most people are dumber than a box of hammers that live in San Francisco Bay Area. All right. It's hard for me to say that with a straight face, but hey, it's true. All right. So, um... Minutia. All right, so we had this murder of Bob Lee, age 43, a software engineer of Cash App, who is a former employee of Google, which we all know is a clandestine service organization. And they um, have used applied linguistics to suggest that maybe there's a crime problem in San Francisco. We know there's a styrofoam hammer attack, you know, killer out there somewhere, right? Because it's definitely not David LaPop who will be tried in federal court for attacking Paul Pelosi in a home where he didn't reside. Paul Pelosi lives on Pacific Avenue and the fake hammer attack happened at 2640 Broadway, which is exactly one block down the hill from his home. <laughs> Do you understand that Paul Pelosi lives approximately 75 yards away from where the San Francisco police responded to the fake hammer attack? to a home that has no view of the Golden Gate Bridge or Belvedere or Tiburon. He lives up the hill with a view of all of those beautiful things. If you can see them through the chemtrails, because they're doing chemtrail dumping over Pacific Heights. I'm happy to tell you. Anyway, um, so the media says that Bob Lee died of an apparent stabbing. I have no idea in my life, I'm a grown man, I have no idea what an apparent stabbing is, okay? I know what a stabbing is, I know what a bayonet attack is, I know what a bayonet wound looks like, okay? Because unless you've personally gone out and bought a cantaloupe and a watermelon and uh, a pineapple and then stuck it with a military NATO issue M7 bayonet, you would have no idea what the wound patterns would look like, diamond shaped. This is a double edge, 22 millimeters wide. This is 22 millimeters. It's double edge, razor sharp. It's about three and a half to four millimeters thick. It's seven inches long, and it is six inches long when attached to the M7 rifle, which typically this weapon, like at My Lai and like at the Sharon Tate murder scene, was attached to M7 rifles. Again, this is seven inches long. This is carbon steel. This is razor sharp. This will go through ribs. This will go through ribs at a straight angle, at a 45 degree angle, or perpendicular or parallel to the rib cage. Obviously, any kind of a knife can go through ribs when it's turned on its side. But when you're killing someone at night and they're trying to escape, it's very difficult to know how to stab someone. So you can lunge, but only the military M7 will work 100% of the time. Even if you hit Abigail Folger's sternum, it went right through Abigail Folger's bone, her sternum. This went through her sternum into her heart. Now, 
when the media calls things ambiguous like apparent stabbings, they could be referring, of course, to a hunting knife known as the buck knife, made by the buck company. The buck knife. This is seven and a half inch long blade. It is single edge. On the bottom, it's sharp. On the top, I cannot cut my fingers because it is not sharp on the top. It's single edge. It is not double edge. Also, it's 28 millimeters wide versus 22 millimeters wide. So I think you can see that the M7 bayonet is the superior choice for going through ribs because it's narrower. And this will work because it's double edged. It will leave a diamond pattern entrance wound and it will go through ribs. No matter which angle you lunge at a person, this will go through bone. This will go through the opening in the rib cage. This will not. You will meet resistance. I would say a minimum of half of your stab wounds with this are going to hit bone and get hung up. In other words, not penetrate. Also, this does not attach to a rifle. This does not, which means that you can't put the leverage on your body weight into a lunge, whereas with the military designed weapon, you can put enormous force into this, which of course increases the depth of which your wound would be. This is a Ukrainian dagger. This is four and a half inches long. This could cause a stab wound. Um, this, by the way, this, by the way, is double-edged. It's double-edged for one inch only. But this is a highly dangerous weapon, easy to conceal. And this would actually be a good solution to the chemtrail pilots above. Because if they met with the business end of this, that would be no more chemtrails over my city, right? Although I think the M7 bayonet would be more effective, along with a team of Gladio soldiers. But anyway, people, this is what I'm trying to tell you is the media never tells you the information that you would need to know so that you could decide for yourself what is true and what is poppycock. The media never used the word bayonet in describing the Lena LaBianca, Rosemary LaBianca, Sharon Tate, Abigail Folger, Tom Coomer, Wojtek Frykowski, Stephen Parent murders. That's seven people killed. The media never used the word bayonet. However, the Los Angeles Police Department typed the word bayonet under the heading, under the heading, most likely weapon used, bayonet. And the Los Angeles Police Department, in two separate police reports, typed the word bayonet as it related to Lena LaBianca, as it related to Abigail Folger and Sharon Tate. They used bayonet typed in the police report. And you should know that Thomas Noguchi blurted the word bayonet at the grand jury hearing in front of the jury under the question, what was the type of weapon used? He blurted the word bayonet. I'm pretty confident that he was told not to use that word. That's a military weapon, and we don't use military weapons when we're attempting to conceal a military murder. Mayhem most foul. But anyway, Thomas Noguchi was not very happy with the district attorney of Los Angeles, which would be Evel Younger, because, of course, he had been lambasted, humiliated, and terminated from his job and took him almost a whole year to get back after the Robert Kennedy assassination where Thomas Noguchi wanted to conduct shoot, shooting tests using the 22 caliber pistol on pigs and goats, which he did in the basement, and he was told not to, and he did it anyway. So they got him out of there for, you know, for making up some lies about him dancing down the hallway saying, oh, I can't wait till Robert Kennedy dies, then I'll be famous, which I sincerely doubt Thomas Noguchi uttered those words. But anyway, under that rumor and innuendo, he was terminated from his job. And about nine months later, he had to be reinstated by the county of Los Angeles as chief medical examiner and uh, apologized and given back pay. Anyway, he was just back 10 days when the Sharon Tate murders happened. So let's just say that those wounds, pardon the pun, had not healed. And Thomas Noguchi decided he wasn't going to obey his orders. So then at the murder trial, seven months later, he blurted the name, the name Bayonet again 
in answering the question of what was the most likely weapon used in the crimes. So Thomas Noguchi, even though all the medical examination written reports do not use the word bayonet, they were scrubbed and edited. But in open court, Thomas Noguchi twice said under oath, bayonet was the most likely weapon used in the murder of Sharon Tate and the people at Cielo Drive and at Waverly Drive, the La Biancas. And the Los Angeles Police Department you typed the word bayonet in two separate police reports describing the crime scene. So that's four leaks of the word bayonet in the Sharon Tate murder. We don't have that with the Bob Lee murder. There's just this discussion of an apparent stabbing. So we don't know if it was a Ukrainian dagger. We don't know if it was a buck knife used for cutting venison. We don't know if it was the NATO issue M7 bayonet or the United States Marine M9, which adds two inches to this. We don't know if it was a Swiss Army knife. We don't know anything. And you know what? We're never going to learn anything about that murder. We just know that it happened in a San Francisco Port Authority called Recon Hill at the Bay Bridge Anchorage, walking distance from the murder site of George Sullivan, who was killed with a shot to the head, uh, August 2nd, 1967, the Summer of Love, CIA San Francisco. Thank you very much. So anyway, what I wanted to emphasize today, people, is if you're going to hear the word stabbing, it would be helpful to see photographs of the wounds. It would be helpful to uh, have the information of how deep the wound was and what the pattern was. What were the wounds in a 360 degree pattern, which would indicate that the victim was trying to escape and trying to flee and then was stabbed in different parts of his body, like Abigail Folger was, like, like Wojtek Frykowski was. I think it's pretty clear from the, for the uh, medical exams that Sharon Tate and Tom Coomer, a.k.a. Jay Sebring, and Lino LaBianca and Rosemary LaBianca were, were chloroformed or stun gun pacified because they had uh, most of their wounds in the same area. Rosemary had stab wounds in her chest, in her shoulder blade, back, and her low back. Lino had all of his wounds in his chest and stomach area, 10. He had 10. M7 bayonet wounds to his chest and stomach. Whereas Rosemary had 50, she had 41 bayonet strikes split between her chest, her back, and her low back. Sharon Tate had 16 bayonet strikes to her chest and her back. Not to her baby, not to her belly. I don't know what you were told about that. That was, that was not true. And Jay Sebring was shot once with an M16 rifle bullet entered and exited his stomach, and then um, he was bayoneted seven times. But you see, if you don't have the information and you haven't actually conducted some tests to see that the buck knife is completely implausible weapon to use, not to mention the sheer number of wounds, at the Cielo crime scene, you're talking about 103 bayonet strikes. One bayonet strike to Stephen Parent, 102 bayonet strikes for, you know, Wojtek Frykowski got 51 bayonet strikes, Abigail Folger got 28 bayonet strikes, Sharon Tate got 16 bayonet strikes, Tom Coomer got seven bayonet strikes, that should add up to 102. And, and Stephen Parent just got a bayonet strike on his left wrist, which severed his wristwatch band, tossing his wristwatch into the rear of his father's car, the Ambassador Rambler two-door sedan. And then his car, he was shot four times with an M16 rifle. Wojtek Frykowski was shot twice with an M16 rifle. So there were seven bullets pulled out of the bodies. One bullet in Jay Sebring, two bullets in Wojtek Frykowski, and then four bullets in Stephen Parent. That adds up to seven M16, 22 caliber style long bullets expended from the M16 rifle, which would have been attached to the M7 bayonet. You see, that makes sense. It also makes sense that William Garrickson, age 19, would have been removed from the property along with three dogs who were all unharmed, 
and taken just down the ice plant, 30 seconds, into one of four staging houses on Sunbrook Drive where they could remain until all the murders were done and all the staging of the crime scene was completed after the murders. And then after the uh, soldiers are showering in one of 12 homes in that general area, um, then William Garrickson could be carried back and placed in his living room and the doggies put into a separate room. And um, I'm assuming the dogs were chloroformed or sprayed with some kind of knockout product. Uh, one of the dogs is 90 pounds, so you don't want to fool around with that dog. And you should know that at Lino LaBianca's uh, crime scene, which is his mother's home, not his home, um, they had two dogs there who were outside and um, they were unharmed. So it's a grand total of five dogs that were unharmed a 19 year old pool boy who's homeless who magically gets an expensive lawyer in the next 24 hours to supervise his polygraph exam which he flunked and um, then no charges are brought against William Garrickson even though he's the only person on the property who wasn't harmed along with the three dogs but it's a grand total of five dogs none of them harmed and you have a 19 year old homeless boy getting paid 35 bucks a week to to feed and walk the dogs. That's like double how much money I was making at the time. I was only 10 years old at the time, and William Garrickson was 19. And he's a homosexual homeless boy from Ohio that was picked up on Hollywood Boulevard by Rudy Altabelli, the fake owner of the fake love house, where Rudy never lived. He never lived in the love house. He lived always in the pool house. <laughs> you see... See, so anyway, I understand what's plausible and I understand what's implausible. And the cover story and the media and their description of a cult ritual murder by Charlie Manson, that is completely and utterly impossible. There is a zero mathematical possibility that that could ever happen in real life. You're talking about a military-controlled, 24-7 surveilled crime scene and nobody gets on that property without security clearances and a go code green light and that would not include Charles Watson or Susan Atkins or Patricia Krenwinkel or the ever so ambiguous Linda Kasabian who barely knew these people I think she knew them for about two weeks and she's pregnant and she's pregnant and Susan Atkins has a 10 month old baby boy and Linda Kasabian has a one-year-old child and is pregnant with a second child, and her husband has fled to Rio de Janeiro, you know, where Jim Jones had a home. You know, Jim Jones of People's Temple, he had a home in Rio de Janeiro, just like Robert Kasabian did. That's a CI enclave where you cannot be extradited from Argentina. I'm not making this up. Robert Kardashian, Robert Kardashian, Kasabian, Robert Kasabian was never presented as a defense for, I mean, as a witness for the prosecution because he was in Buenos Aires, Argentina. All right, that's my point today, people, is if you're going to talk about stabbing, I want to know how many wounds. I want to know what the wound pattern looked like. Was it diamond shaped? I want to have you stab a watermelon with this weapon and then take a picture. Then compare it to the photographs that are shown for Abigail Folger and you tell me if it's the same thing or not. You don't need Thomas Noguchi. You don't need your lion eyes. You just need 20-20 vision to see what's true and what's false. But you know they're not going to show any pictures of Bob Lee because they learned their lesson that less is more when you're concealing the truth. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe. Share my videos because I am shadow banned. Take care.